Let's go ahead and take a look at a brand new beta feature that just came out very recently. In fact, as of recording this video, it came out three days ago on March 18th. This is a new beta that allows you to generate textures for meshes using AI. So it states that Texture Generator creates a 1024 by 1024 pixel textures for mesh parts that you can either import yourself or get from the creator store. Texture Generator understands the geometry of your meshes and it can intelligently texture it based on your text prompt. For example, if you have a treasure chest mesh, it can differentiate between the wooden exterior and the lock to generate a visually consistent texture. That is a tongue twister right there. Treasure chest mesh. To enable the beta in Studio, go to File, Beta Features, and Enable AI Powered Texture Generator, and then you can restart Studio and you should be able to use it. It will show up underneath the Model tab in the Parts subcategory as the Texture Generator. Import a mesh or model of mesh parts into Studio, and then you open up your Texture Generator, you select your specific mesh part that you want to texture, and then you need to rotate or pan to set a generation angle that highlights the significant features or surfaces for texturing, you enter in your prompt, you can preview and see what the preview texture is going to be for that prompt. You can edit your prompt if you need to. And then once you're happy with your results, you can hit a button called save and apply to create the textures. And they give us some examples like here's a chest they generated a texture for with a wooden exterior and metal and a lock, which is pretty cool. And then you also generated some textures for some cargo pants. So let's go ahead and hop into Studio and get started using this beta feature. Now I already have my beta feature enabled. As you can see, the texture generator is underneath the parts tab, but if you don't have it enabled yet, you can head over to file, go down to beta features, and then we can go ahead and enable AI power texture generator. It should be the second option. So you can tick that. It'll ask you to agree to some terms. And then once you do that, you can hit save, restart studio and hop into a base plate like this. Here are a few mesh parts that I grabbed from the catalog. One's a simple cube that I've made into a rectangle. Here's a cylinder. And then here's a more complex car mesh that we're going to kind of challenge the AI to make a texture for. But let's start off really simple and let's make a texture for this box or this rectangle right here. And I have an idea of what I want it to do. I want it to make a cereal box texture. So this is going to be some kind of generic branded cereal. So let's go ahead and open up our texture generator. We have our box selected and now we need to adjust where we're looking at our texture to make sure we're highlighting the most important area. So I believe the most important area is obviously going to be the side because that's where all the branding is going to be for our cereal box. So it gives us some examples here. Describe a texture for your mesh like rusty robot or cat with samurai armor, photorealistic style. So let's go ahead and give it a prompt. We could say uh, generic branded cereal box photorealistic. Um, let's just see what it does with that. And then you can go ahead and hit this preview button. Currently, there's a max of 35 previews you can do per day, and there's a maximum of 10 textures you can save per day. Of course, they're probably going to bump this up to a higher level once this comes out of beta, but right now it's quite limited on how many you can do. I've already messed around with this texture generator a little bit, so I only have 20 previews left for the day. But let's go ahead and preview this texture. And actually, before we do that, there is an option down here for some advanced settings, like you can set a seed or you can have it randomize it for you. It'll show you the generation angle. There's an option for smart UV unwrapping. So it says unwrap UVs to make one full use of the generated texture only unwraps when there are overlaps in your UV layout and then specify front view. It says specifies the chosen generation angle as the front of the mesh. This is helpful for objects with a clear front and back like avatars and animals. So use this uh, for any textures. You need to specifically define where the front of that mesh is. Well, let's go ahead and preview and see what this AI generates for us. And there we go. There's my generic branded cereal. That's kind of a lame. It actually generated some barcodes. I'm assuming this is supposed to be some kind of nutrition label. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, we've got some generic looking branding here. That's pretty cool. Actually, that's odd. Here on one side, it shows some kind of branded cereal, but if we flip it around, 
We obviously have a side with our barcode and our nutrition label, but the other side shows nothing. So I wonder what this is. Very interesting. Well, let's go ahead and save and apply this texture. As you can see, I only have six left. And let's go ahead and see what it puts on our cereal box mesh part. Obviously, it's going to take a little bit of time for it to bake the texture. And then after it bakes the texture, it probably has to go through moderation. So it might take a little bit more time before it finally applies the texture. But it's OK. I can wait. We'll see what the end result looks like here in a second. OK, perfect. And there we go. There is our textured cereal box. Um, whatever that is or or cell or cell. Or Ors or Orsgel, <laughs> whatever. Very odd cereal. Is that a crab? What? What? It, is it bananas? I don't know. Interesting texture. There's some other branding for it. There's a sunflower or something. Some, some kind of cereal bowl. This is this is not cereal. This is sinsol, sinol, sinial. So yeah, there we go. There is our cereal texture box. Of course, it's not that good of a texture. There's obviously a lot of errors in it. But if this is just going to be a prop that you need to fill up maybe uh, a shelf with, just fill it up with random props, players aren't going to really pay attention to it. So this could definitely be a useful tool for doing something like that. Let's go ahead and move over to our cylinder instead. And for this cylinder, let's go ahead and transform it into an oil barrel. Let's do something like that. We could have this be like some kind of rusty oil barrel that's like leaking oil. So we'll say rusty oil barrel, um, leaking oil. Actually, let's get a let's get rid of the rusty part. We'll do oil barrel, leaking oil, and then of course we can define the style for the texture. So we let's say cartoony instead of photorealistic, and let's go ahead and preview what it generates for us. Okay, that's a very interesting texture generated. I don't know how cartoony that texture is. It looks more photorealistic to me. I guess there's some kind of cartoony elements to it. Actually looks pretty interesting. So let's go ahead and save and apply this texture. And uh, let's see what we get. Let's see what our result is. All right, there we go. Here is our oil barrel. Where is that? Wait, what? Where is that oil spot? I swear there was an oil splat, like like some kind of yellow splat on this barrel. Am I, am I going crazy? I swore I saw something like that. All right, that's very odd. Obviously, this is still a beta feature, so um, it's a little buggy, and it didn't generate the texture that I saw in the preview, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and move on to a more difficult mesh, this vehicle right here. And let's go ahead and define the most important part of this vehicle to be, let's say, the front. And then let's actually go ahead and specify the front view. How do we do that? You know, actually, I think I think the generation angle that we currently have set is going to be used as the front view for this object. So let's just kind of let's just kind of match that up as much as possible. We could do something. Actually, let's specify zero and zero. Actually, maybe we'll tilt it a little bit more. Eh, we'll do something like, okay, yeah, we'll do that. This is the front of our vehicle, so that way it knows what's going on. And then let's go ahead and change the prompt here. Let's say we want, we want a blue car, and we want it to have two black stripes going down the center, and then we want to have black tires, let's say black tires with golden rims, and we want to have purple headlights and red tail lights tail lights and let's say we want this to be photorealistic so let's go ahead and see what this generates for us okay okay texture generator that looks pretty stinking cool now i don't think it matches up perfectly with the windows we've got going on here but that is a sick looking texture Look at that thing. Okay, well, let's go ahead and save and apply this texture and let, let's go ahead and look at the end result. Well, this is probably the most disappointing result I've ever seen. It looks absolutely nothing like what was shown in the preview. Look how awful this thing looks. 
I saw something beautiful and majestic and incredible in that preview, and it gives me this garbage. What the heck is this? Looks like it was painted by a first grader. So, yeah, this AI definitely has a long way to go. Of course, this is going to be the worst that this AI is ever going to be, so it's only up from here. And it did do a good job at identifying where, I guess, the rims were at, where the tires were at. It kind of guesstimated where the taillights were-ish. I mean, it looked like it had a hard time figuring out where the taillights were, and especially the headlights. It could not figure out that the headlights were right here and not all the way over to here. So, I mean, wow, this is disappointing. That texture in the image looked way better than whatever this garbage is. This looks terrible. Oh well, it's a beta feature, so once it comes out of beta, I'm sure it's going to be much more improved than it is right now. So go ahead and hop into studio, have fun messing around with meshes and generating textures, see if you can get anything cool to generate or anything interesting to generate. And uh, other than that, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.